Well, praise God, it's good to be in God's house this morning. Amen, are you glad you're here? Praise the Lord. I'm always glad to be here. Hear God's praises being sung by his people. To pray together, to have sweet fellowship, and to hear the proclaiming of his excellent word. Open your Bibles, please, and turn to the book of Psalms. Psalm chapter 19, Psalm chapter 19, if you are able, please stand as we read our opening text, which is found in Psalm 19, verse 1, Psalm 19, verse 1, the heavens declare the glory of God, the heavens declare the glory of God. Amen. Let's pray. Thank you, Father in heaven, for your goodness to us, your love, your mercy, your grace, your kindness. And Lord, I pray that you please be with me as I bring the message this morning. I pray that it would not be me, but that it would be you. We don't need to hear from Pastor Kimball. We need to hear from you. So please, Lord, by your precious Holy Spirit, I pray that you would Anoint these lips of clay to preach your words and your words only. And I ask that you would give us eyes to see and ears to hear what you are saying. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen Amen. and amen. Praise God. Thank you. You may be seated. Praise God. The Bible says, the heavens declare the glory of God. The heavens declare the glory of God. We were privileged to see an eclipse this past week, something that doesn't happen very often, so I felt very glad to be able to witness this event. And it put me in mind of how the heavens declare the glory of God. So it got me thinking, and I want us to turn to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 1, the heavens declare the glory of God is our theme this morning, is our message. And the Bible declares the glory of God, but the heavens declare the glory of God. God created the heaven and the earth. In Genesis chapter 1, we're going to read Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 to 6, and verses 14 to 18. Which says, in the beginning God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. The spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. And God said, let there be light. Amen. And there was light. Let there be light. And there was light. God spoke, and the light appeared. Verse 4, And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. And God called the light day. And the darkness he called night. And the evening and the morning were the first day. And God said, Let there be a firmament. And then jump down to verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years. And let them be for lights in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth. And it was so. And God made two great lights the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. And he made the stars also. And God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good. Amen. His whole creation at the end, when he was through creating everything, he said it was all very good. 
Amen. Amen. And you would expect nothing else, right? God just made it. He spoke it into existence. It was very good. Everything God does is perfect. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Notice in verse 3 it says, God said, let there be light. That word light is in the Hebrew or. Light or illumination. Enlightenment. And then he said in verse 14, let there be lights. Plural. It's the same root word, but it's maora. Which is the feminine of the original. And it's the same meaning. Lights that gives Enlightenment, illumination, that which makes clear. Amen. He said that these lights were to be for signs. Look at it. It's in verse 14. These lights were to be for signs, seasons, days, and years. These are the sun, the moon, the stars. These are the lights. They are to show us signs, seasons, Days and years, right there in verse 14, Genesis chapter 1. Signs, seasons, days, and years. Now the seasons, days, and years we understand, but what are the signs herein mentioned? And why are they listed first? As though they are most important. Signs, seasons, days, and years. What are those signs? The Bible says that these signs have a story to tell and that they are telling their story constantly. Amen. Let's read it. In Psalm chapter 19, let's go back there. Psalm chapter 19, beginning at verse 1, going down to verse 6. We read, The heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament showeth his handiwork. Now remember the firmament we read in Genesis chapter 1. The firmament enhances the lights in the heavens. The firmament was a canopy over the earth before the flood. And it says that God set the signs, set these stars, the lights in the firmament. He enhanced the lights in the firmament. And you should hear Dr. Carl Baugh lecture on this firmament. It, it's wonderful. We, we heard this many years ago and we've never forgotten it. But in Psalm chapter 19, it says, These heaven, the heavens declare the glory of God, the heavens declare the glory of God, and the firmament sheweth his handiwork. Verse 2, day unto day uttereth speech, and night unto night showeth knowledge. The heavens are talking to us if we listen. Verse 3, There's, there is no speech in our language where their voice is not heard. Their line is gone out through all the earth, and their words to the end of the world. In them hath he set a tabernacle for the sun, which is as a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, and rejoiceth as a strong man to run a race. His going forth is from the end of the heaven, and his circuit unto the ends of it. And there is nothing hid from the heat thereof. The heavens declare the glory of God. They are speaking to us. These signs in the heavens, these stars are speaking to us. Declaring the glory of God. To declare here in the Hebrew is sulfur. Properly it means to mark as a record to inscribe or enumerate, to recount or celebrate. But how do the heavens declare the glory of God? Did you know that God gave the stars names? Amen. Psalm 147. Please go to Psalm chapter 147, verse 4. Psalm 147, verse 4. It says that he, God, telleth the number of the stars. He calleth them all by their names. Think of that. The stars have names. In Isaiah, in Isaiah, in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 26, we read also, Isaiah 40, 26, 
Lift up your eyes and behold who hath created these things that bringeth out their host by number. He calleth them all by names by the greatness of his might. Amen. Amen. God named the stars. Before God created man, he created the stars and he gave them names which taken in order tell a wonderful and beautiful story. The names of the stars were the original influence behind the signs of heaven, sometimes called the band of heaven, or the Matzerot in Hebrew, the Matzerot. These signs are recorded for us in scripture. In the book of Job, chapter 9, we read, Job chapter 9, verses 7 to 9, we read that God spread out the heavens and made the constellations. Job 9, verses 7 to 9. God commandeth the sun, and it riseth not, and sealeth up the stars, which alone spreadeth out the heavens, and treadeth upon the waves of the sea, which maketh Arcturus, Orion, and Pleiades, and the chambers of the south. So here he names three constellations, Arcturus, Orion, and the Pleiades. And then go down to chapter 38 of the book of Job. Job chapter 38, verses 31 and 32. And the question is posed, Canst thou bring forth Maserot in his season, or canst thou guide Arcturus with his sons? Interesting, huh? I think a lot of people only realize that some of the uh, names of some of the constellations are actually in the Bible. Also in the book of the prophet Amos, Amos chapter 5, verse 8, it says, Seek him that maketh the seven stars, or the Pleiades, the seven sisters, and Orion, and turneth the shadow of death into the morning, and maketh the day dark with night, and calleth, that calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth them out of the face of the earth, upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name. Amen. God created all of these. He created all of these. He created the stars, but he also named the stars. And the names of those stars have made in the heavens different constellations and different figures in the heavens. And those, those figures, those constellations tell the story of our Lord Jesus Christ. Pleiades is a group of seven stars located in the constellation of Taurus. Orion is a secondary constellation. Now, these are the constellations mentioned in the scriptures which I just read. Orion is a secondary constellation, or decan, also located in Taurus. Arcturus is the brightest star in the second decan of Bootes. Bootes. The use of these star names and, and others in the Bible show us that they were known by name from antiquity. And the fact that the same names are used today shows us the preservation of, the, of these ancient identifications. So up in the heavens, the stars all have names, and those names indicate what God was going to do. From the very beginning, God showed what he was going to do. He showed it in the heavens. Praise God. Amen. So the Hebrew word matzerot means the signs of the zodiac or the constellations. And the word zodiac comes from the Hebrew word, the root word, zodi, which means way or the road or the way. Amen. Yeah. And Charles Spurgeon called the stars and the signs of heaven God's traveling evangelists. Amen. They do indeed preach, and they tell a wonderful story, and it's, a, it's the greatest story ever told. Amen. The greatest story ever told. It is the most ancient story ever told. It is the most beautiful story ever told. It tells us the way and guides us down the narrow road that leads to life. It was given to Adam, who told it to his descendants. Adam told his descendants. Now, Adam lived a long time. And, you know, so Adam knew several of his descendants. 
It's not like today where we, we might know our grandfather or we might sometimes know our great-grandfather. But there were several generations alive at the same time in the day of Adam because they lived so long, remember? They lived, Methuselah did, lived to be 969 years old. Imagine how many children and grandchildren you would know if you lived to be that old. A lot. Well, Josephus tells us this. Josephus tells us this. That the descendants of Seth discovered that science, that particular sort of wisdom that is concerned with the heavenly bodies and their order. And to prevent their discoveries from being lost before they were sufficiently known, Adam, having predicted that the world would be destroyed at one time by force of fire and at another time by a mighty deluge of water, made two pillars, one of brick and the other of stone, and they inscribed their discoveries on them both so that if the pillar of brick should be destroyed by the flood, the pillar of stone might remain and exhibit those discoveries to mankind. And also inform them that there was another pillar of brick erected by them. And he says that it remained until his day, which was the first century. So they, this, they're very ancient, these monuments, these pillars. And the Bible tells us where these pillars are. In Isaiah 19:19, 19, 19, it says in that day, I'm going to read verses 19 and 20. Isaiah chapter 19, verses 19 and 20. In that day there shall be an altar to the Lord in the midst of the land of Egypt, and a pillar at the border thereof to the Lord. And it shall be for a sign and for a witness unto the Lord of hosts in the land of Egypt. Now these monuments are very ancient. And they were standing in the first century. And i got to tell you, they're still standing today. They're still standing today, and they can be seen. Tourists visit them every year. You know where they are? <laughs> now, we read a few minutes ago that the heavens declare the glory of God. But just what exactly is the glory of God? The glory of God is not a thing, but it is a person. The glory of God is a person, and his name is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In Hebrews chapter 1, we read it earlier. Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 to 3. God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. God is so awesome. Our Lord Jesus Christ is the creator. Amen. In John chapter 1, nothing was made that was not made by Jesus. Amen. Verse 3, who being the brightness of his glory, who being the brightness of the glory of God, the brightness, the strength of the glory of God, and the expressed image of his person, and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. This is speaking of the Lord Jesus Christ. The glory of God is our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And the heavens declare the story of Jesus. This is great. I'm enjoying this. I hope you are. Yes. This is very interesting. I, I love this story. It's a wonderful story and a wonderful study. But it's virtually lost in modern theology. And that's a shame because so much can be gleaned from this study. So the heavens declare the glory of God. The heavens declare the gospel story. The gospel is written in the sky. And every day, it's just right there. It's shining forth. Every day. The Bible says, day unto day uttereth speech. Night unto night revealeth knowledge. The story is being told all the time so that nobody is without excuse. Nobody has an excuse. So where do we begin? In modern what they call astrology, the zodiac begins in the spring with Aries. But it's, this is a corruption. We want nothing to do with astrology. Amen? 
nothing at all to do with astrology. It is the result, astrology is the result of the enemy's attempt to corrupt that which God gave us for our good. Anything and everything that God gives us for good, anything and everything that God gives us for good, the enemy wants to corrupt it and destroy it and, and make it dirty and deceive people. The enemy does not want anything good, any truth of God to be extant. He doesn't want anything that would lead us to God to exist. We are opposed to astrology, but the signs of heaven were created by God for his honor and glory and to point his people to Jesus. And we delight in that. Amen? Amen. Amen. So where do we begin? Well, the aforementioned pillars in Egypt give us the key. The ancient zodiac of Esna in Egypt tells us where to start. It's in, the, in this particular zodiac, it's got, there's a break between Leo and Virgo. And there's a little picture of a sphinx right there where the break is. So that's telling us the key of where to start. Between uh, Virgo and Leo. We start with Virgo and we end with Leo. Go around the whole band, start with Virgo and go around the whole band to Leo. Virgo is the picture of the virgin. The virgin, Virgo. She is depicted as holding in her hands the symbols of that holy child which she would bear. In her left hand is the brightest star in Virgo, Azamak, meaning a branch. Get that, a branch. And in her right hand is a stalk of wheat or seed, all indicated by the names of the stars. Jesus is called the seed of the woman. In Genesis chapter 3, 15, we read, and I will put enmity between thee and the woman and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his heel. And he is also called, Jesus is also called the branch. In Jeremiah chapter 33, verse 15, it says, In those days and at that time I will cause the branch of righteousness to grow up unto David. And he shall execute judgment and righteousness in the land. The branch is the Lord Jesus Christ. In Zechariah, we read also, he is the branch. Hear, o, hear now, O Joshua, high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are men wondered at. For behold, I will bring forth my servant, the branch. And that's all in capital letters if you have a King James Bible all in capital letters. It's the Lord Jesus Christ. Zechariah chapter 6 verses 12 to 13. Speak unto him saying, Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts. Amen. And behold, the man whose name is the branch, and he shall grow up out of his place, and he shall build the temple of the Lord. Even he shall build the temple of the Lord and he shall bear the glory and shall sit and rule upon his throne. Hallelujah. And he shall be priest among, upon his throne and counsel and the counsel of peace shall be between them both. Praise God. So Virgo is telling us that, that a virgin will conceive and bear a son and that he will be the branch he will be the, the seed of the woman. Are you enjoying this? I hope so. As with all, as with all the 12 major signs of the Mazarot, there are three secondary constellations in, Decan, in, in Virgo. These are called decans. And these three secondary decans are called coma, which means the desired one. Centaurus, meaning the despised, and Boötes, meaning the coming one. These appellations are all indicated by the names of the stars. All these names of the constellations are, are because of the names that God gave the stars. 
And so the greatest story ever told begins with the promised one. Jesus is the promised one. And God gave us the whole story ahead of time in the heavens. And God told Adam the names of the stars and he passed it on to his descendants. And they preserved it in the two pillars that are in Egypt to this day. In Matthew chapter 1, verse 21 to 23, we hear of the promised one. And she shall bring forth a son. This virgin shall bring forth a son and shall call his name Jesus. For he shall save his people from their sins. Hallelujah. Now all this was done so that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall be with child and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. God with us. God with us. And the story goes on. Libra, the scales, is next and depicts the fact that there is a price that must be paid for sin. Libra tells us that we do not have the sufficient price to pay for our own sin, but that the Lord Jesus Christ would have the price sufficient. Hallelujah. The names of the stars, our names of some of the stars in this constellation are Zubin al-Akrabi, Zubin al-Akrabi, which means the price of the conflict. Zubin al-Ganubi is another star. It means, it's, it means the price deficient, not good enough. That's us. We cannot do away with our sin. No matter what we do, we cannot be good enough. But the other star that I want you to notice is Zubin al-Shamali, the price which covers. Amen. Our sins are covered because of the price that Jesus paid on the cross. And we see all of this in Libra. Now don't let the devil discourage you or, or take you away from this study because I'm telling you, the devil wants to defile anything and everything that's good. Everything the devil wants to defile it, ruin it, corrupt it. But it tells us all about the Lord Jesus Christ. Next is Scorpio. Okay, go ahead and pass out that. I got a I got a handout, and if, if you're watching this and you'd like this handout, just write a letter and, and ask for it. Our, ad, our mailing address is on our internet page, and so is our email address. Just let me know if you want this handout, and I will send it to you. Next, Scorpio depicts the conflict of the great redeemer. Ophiuchus struggles with the serpent. I guess I should wait till everybody has it. Now the man you see, the figure there in the, in the diagram, is Ophiuchus. Ophiuchus struggles with the serpent who is trying to take the crown, but he will never succeed because the man is holding the serpent and preventing it. In this portion of the heavens, we find the serpent going after the shining crown the crown is just out of his reach because he is being held back by a man figure, Ophiuchus, which is representative of our Lord Jesus Christ. This was established in the constellation of Virgo. So the stars tell the story. Look at the star in his head. If you want to write these down, I don't know if you want to or not. But in his head, you see that star, it's called Ras al Hagus. It means the head. The, the name of that name literally means the head of him who holds. The head of him who holds. Look at the crown up there. It says that star's name is Alphaca. That means, that word, the shining crown. It means the shining crown. So you see how the names of the stars are what determined the figures in the signs of heaven. These names of the stars, they were given to the stars by God. God named these stars. And look at the star Cheleb there in the head of the serpent. Cheleb means the serpent 
enfolding, enfolding. Look down a little further on the neck, or if serpents have necks, a little further down the serpent, there's the star Unuk, which means encompassing. The serpent is trying to encompass and kill this man, but he's never going to do it. And look at the scorpion there. The heart of the scorpion, there's a star, and the name of the star is Antares, which means the wounding or tearing. In the foot of Ophiuchus, there's a star, and its name is Saif, which means bruised. And look at the tail of the scorpion. There's a star there named Lasath, which means the perverse. The names of the other stars, or some of the other stars in the constellation, are Triophas, treading underfoot, or Carnabus, the wounding, or Mergeros, contending. So you see there the battle between good and evil. The serpent wants the crown, but he's never going to get the crown. He's never going to get it. Because Ophiuchus, or the Lord Jesus Christ, is holding him back. Holding him back. He's never going to win. He knows he's going to lose. He would have to know it. The stars have been telling this story for a long, long time. So, in this we see the great battle. The great battle. Satan, that old serpent, wants to be God. But he's held back by one who is greater than he. Hallelujah. In Isaiah chapter 14... Verses 12 to 15, we read, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut to the ground, which didst weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the Most High. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell, to the sides of the pit. Hallelujah. And thus the root of David hath prevailed. So it goes on and on, and it ends... I don't have near enough time to cover all of it, and I don't really want to. We can maybe do this as a series uh, for Bible study on Wednesday night sometime. But I just wanted to bring this to you. The heavens have declared the glory of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, from the very beginning. They tell the story. You start at Virgo, and you go all the way down, and you end at Leo the Lion, the, the conquering Lion of Judah, who comes to, to conquer all, and he is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. He wins. He wins. The heavens have told the story for ages and ages. I want to end with Romans chapter 1. Romans chapter 1, verse 18 to 20. The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. The heavens declare the glory of God, the gospel in the stars. It's been there all along. And we have no excuse. Tonight, when you go home, and just go outside and look up. Look up and see that the heavens declare the glory of God. Amen. 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 Praise God. Yes. This altar is open for prayer as we sing our closing hymn.